Hi, welcome to the tutorial for the chain stitch crochet necklace. So let's start with selecting the beads we're gonna use. Now I know I went a little bit overboard but I've taken out all the brown, gold and bronze colored beads I could find or imagine and all I know is I want to make a brown necklace and I, as I was taking out the beads I said oh this one looks good this one looks good but then certain colors don't go together well so I just took them all out and that way I can share my selection process with you. I've also uh, picked out a few different colors of beading thread. This is Ceylon and this is Demo. Um, they're all size D and the thing is I'm not sure if I'm gonna go with a dark brown or if I'm gonna go with a light brown. Now I would not suggest using a beige or a cream uh, thread because it will get dirty pretty fast but a light brown is okay. So, like I said, I totally went overboard. And to make the process a little bit easier, I'm going to go with a neutral with a neutral color of thread. So, either this one or this one. Now, what you have to think of is that the thread you use is gonna have a big influence on the end result. If you use a dark color you're gonna have a dark necklace. Even if you use a lot of um, light colored beads the overall effect is gonna be dark. Now if you use a light color with dark beads you're gonna have a lighter effect. So I'm gonna go with this one because I really want to make a brown necklace. Now I'm gonna pick out one type of beads I absolutely want to use and that would be these because this is so perfect for using up odds and ends and I have quite a few of these beads less left and I would like to use them up. So this is gonna have to be the color, sorry for the crinkling, that all my other beads have to match with. Okay, I can start by ruling out the ones I find that don't match with this. And this one for instance, in my opinion, doesn't go together well. This is more an ochre brown. It's a bit yellowish and I don't like how it goes with the, the rust. So I'm taking this one out. Also this, in my opinion, doesn't go together well. No. Now these, well, are perfect because they're the same color but just a different size. So yes. And I really like how the copper looks with this. Now if I'm gonna go for copper, I can rule out gold. Definitely no gold. See? Doesn't match. And as you can tell, I've already um, shrunk out a lot of, of options. Now these are the same, but this is a size six and this is a size, oops, sorry, that was off camera and you couldn't see that. So this is a size six and this is a size eight of the same beads, so that's good. We also want to make sure that we don't use too much of the same colors, even if they're in different sizes. Maybe I'm gonna pick only one of of those two later on. I'm gonna set this down in the middle. It's easier. Now 
these I think match well together, but I don't think these two go together and I want to use this. So go. Um, now these go together, but these, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Oh yeah, no, they do. Okay. So, okay. Now, no, this brown and this brown, not the same category. Go. Now this honey amber color goes very, very well with that. As do these, they're a little bit lighter. Yeah, okay, I'll keep them for now. These have um, cool tint, these are warm, so nope. Dark brown, very neutral, yes. These fit as well. Bronze, warm bronze. Hmm. Now, I think they're still a little too cool in comparison, especially when I put them next to these cup coppers. See, you have war really warm and this looks really cool next to it, even though this is normally a very warm color. Okay, oops, see, I already spilled one. These, yes. These are the same copper ones as uh, in the little bag, but larger, so no. And these go well, very well as well. And then I have these fire polished and Huh. Well, no, not going to use them. There we go. I have my selection. Now, these three are very similar in color. And these two are the same size. So I'm going to go with these and leave these out because I already have the large ones in that color. And that's it. I don't really have a conflict of colors or sizes anymore. And that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine types of beads. Yes, that will work. Okay, and do they all match with the, the threads? They do. They do. Okay, so this is how I make my selection. Now, if I had any other types of beads like drop beads, um, I could also use them. The only type of beads you should not use are Swarovski and Swarovski bicones in in specifically, but actually Swarovskis in general, because the edges um, around the hole are too sharp and they will cut the uh, nylon beading threads. So no Swarovskis, but any other beads will do if the holes aren't too sharp, the edges of the holes aren't too sharp. So, okay, I have everything I need. I'm just gonna grab a beading needle. Oh yeah, no, another thing I wanted to show now, by ruling out the colors I thought did not go well with um, what I was planning. See, I already have the materials for another one. See, that would look great. So I might just make this one as well. But that's for later. Okay, I'm going to set up my, my beading board and we can start. Okay, so I laid out my beads and all of a sudden I'm really, really not sure about these. I think they're too dark compared to the other beads, so I'm not, not going to put them in. I've got my handy dandy scoop. And 
and I think I'm going to repeat this one instead. So I have a little bit more dark, but um, it's okay to, to have a repeat. If there is one type of bead that you're really fond of, you can surely repeat them one, once or twice in, in the series. So this is going to be my series. And uh, what I do, I'll show you just like this. I put my containers and my bags in the right order on the top of my board. So I don't have to put too, ma too many beads on the board at once. And I can remember in what order I put them um, if one uh, should run out. And this is one type of bead I'm not going to incorporate into my necklace. <laughs> and another reason why it's a good idea to set out your containers is when the cat comes and sit on your beads and messes them all up. Okay, so I'm going to lay out my um, bead mat and I'll be back. Well, okay, so I lay down my beads. Um, Again, JD was trying to lay on them again, but uh, now she's purring on my lap. I also uh, put a needle on my tread and I'm using the size 10, the Beadalon size 10 um, heart beating needles. You can also use a size 12, but normally all the, the beads I have here have large enough holes to um, use a 10 with. Now I just have to determine uh, my string pattern or, or the amount of beads of each I'm gonna, I'm gonna tread. Now I'll use this as an example. What I usually do is put the large beads by three. The really, really, really large beads, I put them by themselves. Just one, I'm, I'm trying to find a good example here so like here I used fire polished beads I just used one at a time here I used drop beads I put them by three I actually really like how the beads look when they're paired by three like that they make like a little clover thingy when you have really tiny beads you can also do five but for this time i'm just gonna do three and um once i'm gonna um just let the different sizes play out so only these no um these and these i'm gonna string only one at a time and all the others i'm gonna do three so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, 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 three and one. This is my repeat pattern. Of beads. I'm just going to continue beading until I use up all these beads. I don't really, I don't really have rules um, of how much you need to string or how much um, length uh, you need. I basically just usually have one type of beads I want to finish up and I keep on stringing until I'm done with them. Um, now what you could do is do a test and uh, already hook this set, measure how much crochet length that gives you and then determine how many layers you want in your necklace 
and um, then go from there. Now, what I love about these necklaces is, is they're all they're really one of a kind. They never look the same because uh, the one is thinner, one is uh, thicker, one has a larger beads, one has thinner beads. The colors are different, so I I don't really like saying you have to do this or that with this type of necklaces JD wants to go and lay on the beads again nope so. the only thing you have to do is enjoy the process that's the only thing I would say that you should uh, do absolutely do so I'm gonna string up all my beads and I'm gonna actually listen to a podcast while I do that because that's something I really enjoy doing. It's listening to podcasts or audiobooks while I'm beating and especially when I'm stringing. So I think I'm gonna put um, Ellie Ward on. She has a great podcast, it's called Ologies. I love scientific stuff, although they're not always scientific. Um, I'll put a link down below if you like learning new things and um, in, a, in a humoristic way, I can totally um, recommend listening to Ologies by Ellie Ward. So I'm going to listen to Ellie while I'm stringing and I'll see you when I'm done with my stringing. Okay, so... I'm done stringing all my beads and I measured it for you. This is 6,8 meters of bead. Now what you're gonna need is a Ziploc bag and also something that you can wind your um, hooked string on. I use this um, empty uh, cylinder I got from um, wrapping um, what do you call that uh, ribbon for wrapping presents um, but you could use a um, kitchen towel roll or basically any cylinder that um, you can think of okay so why a ziploc bag specifically well because you can just drop your bead string in it. Also, I forgot to mention this before uh, with the stringing. With this uh, model, it really doesn't matter if you make uh, mistakes or if you if you uh, um, put one too many or not enough beads or, or if you mix up the, the pattern you um, decided on um, as you go it really doesn't matter all that much because in the in the hole you won't see it now um, put your beaded mess <laughs> in the bag and leave a little bit out like this and then close the ziplock So if you do it like this, the thread can go through, but not the beads. And this is gonna be handy when you need to take more thread. Sorry for the crinkling. Put this aside and then you'll also need a crochet hook. The size of the hook doesn't really matter all that much. I'm using a 1.6. You could use a, a two, two and a half. You can use a one whatever your favorite hook is um, it's just gonna determine how large your your chains are gonna be and if you want them small you just use a smaller hook if you want them larger you use a larger hook and also your tension is gonna determine most of it okay so I put a stitch marker on here so that I could measure the length of the the thread so so we're going to start by um, crocheting a few centimeters of chain stitches and again 
it's completely up to you if you want to do it tight or loose. I normally um, I hook like a, a few chains and I tighten them as I go and they can be irregular. It really, really, really doesn't matter. Okay, So just make sure you have a few centimeters. It doesn't matter like this. Now you're going to bring up your first set of beads. And for me, that would be the golden ones here. And just slip stitch. And as you can see, they automatically form a, a little leaf shape. And then again, A few change stitches. I usually do five. Now also here it depends on what you want. If you want a very airy necklace you just do a lot more change stitches in between. If you want it more compact like the black one that's with five in between and that's what I like to do. I think that's a nice space. But you can do seven, you can do ten, you can do twenty. If you want it really 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 compact you could do three then you get a very thick and compact necklace also very pretty yes i'm sorry about uh, the little spot on my finger but i lost um, well my finger lost the battle with the sewing machine today um it doesn't make it very easy to to crochet <laughs> so basically the rest of the necklace is always the same you bring up your next set of beads you slip stitch and tighten they will group together automatically and then one, two, three, four, five. You chain your number and you do your next group. Tighten and one. Something's not right here. One two, three, and four. Now this is probably due to the hook I'm using. I am going to switch to a different type of hook, but my hooks are downstairs. So it's going to be for later. I'm just going to show you a few more of these. When you have a single bead, you just do the same, but with just one bead. Now this is very thin thread and it splits very easily, but it really doesn't matter. You won't see little things like this. You won't see it. In the whole bunch, no one will ever notice. So now this is going to take some time, but it's also very relaxing because you can do this while talking to people, while watching TV, while doing you know um, while watching tv or what listening to to podcasts or it's it's pretty mindless and if one has six chains or four chains it doesn't matter you just keep on hooking like this can you see how the fact that i used the same amount of beads but different sizes makes this variation in sizes of, of the groups. I love that. I also think that the colors, though they, they might look very different sometimes, but I think this is going to be a very nice autumn colored necklace when it's when it's finished. So I'm going to hook up my 
uh, complete 6.8 meters of uh, beaded thread. And then I will show you how to finish the necklace. Have fun! Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to show you what I'm doing with this one. Well, now this is pretty short, but um, I can show you anyway. So I take a little piece of tape and attach it. And then as you go, just Ooh, I forgot to put a stitch marker on. Well, that's not smart. Yeah, when doing this, stitch markers are your friend. So, and as you crochet, you just wind whatever you've done. Now, of, of course, this is just for, for showing purposes. You just wind it on there. And then you, you, you scoot it over and then you just continue like this and that is how you ensure that your um, hooked thread does not get tangled up because this with all the, the things sticking out this is a nightmare to untangle so um, that's why you need to really need to roll it on something and it can be anything but just make sure that you roll it onto something and it cannot slip off if you're using like a kitchen tower roll make sure that you put something on the edge or you you cut the edges and you you fold them back so so that you have a stop but just make sure that it's something um, secure enough so that your work doesn't um, roll off and get tangled um, after all okay so have fun i'm almost done yay okay so this has taken me a few hours a lot of hours to um crochet it all um I managed to listen to a few podcasts. I listened to a few audiobooks. So, yes, hours. I would say uh, at least 10 hours. Probably. I, I didn't uh, time it, but it takes a lot of time. It's, it's, it's not hard, but it just is very time consuming. So like I have mentioned before, it really, really doesn't matter if all the spaces are even, if um, you made a mistake in stringing the beads, if you put one too many or you forgot one or you messed up the um, order of the beads. It's just gonna come together in one nice... Um, bundle anyway and um, there is practically no way of checking if if uh, this the, the sequence is correct anyway so the reason why you should have some kind of a sequence and don't do it completely randomly is just to avoid uh, color spots um, that could happen when you when you have um, certain colors that or, or shapes that stick out more than others uh, and still even then you could just uh, you could just do whatever it really 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 doesn't matter with this with this kind of necklaces you you just you are free to do whatever you want it's the symmetry is gonna be there anyways. So these were the last beads. Woohoo! So I almost used up my whole um, bobbin of thread. So now I'm just gonna do a few centimeters just to have better grip. And 
are my scissors. Cut, pull, and there we go. I have quite um, quite a good quantity of um, chain uh, here. Okay, so I'm going to go get my materials, my findings and everything I need to finish this and I'll be back. Okay, so I got my findings. I like to use these, but unfortunately I don't have them in copper, only in bronze and silver. And I think this um, is a little too dull for, for um, the necklace. I think it's going to look better with this one it's a bit more shiny so i'm gonna use these um what else you need two end caps and two eye pins and then the findings for the closure i'm gonna do a very simple closure with just uh, a little uh, chain and uh, two open rings what else do you need is a piece of cardboard or um, I like to use the lids of my containers because this is 40 centimeters and that's the perfect length. But you can also cut a piece of cardboard or I could use this. I have used this as, as well before and I'm going to wrap the, the chain around this. Now you can you don't have to but i think it's easier use a little piece of um, tape just to make it easier and attach the end of your uh, chain and then basically all you're gonna do or, or all you have to do is wrap I'm gonna try to do it wrap the the crochet chain around the lid or your piece of cardboard or whatever you're using um keep in mind okay this is not good i have to Keep in mind that this has a bit of stretch to it, so you don't want to overstretch it, but you don't want to make it too loose either. Just try to get to keep an even tension. And try not to to crisscross them too much, but even if you do, it's it's really not that big big a deal. So what I do is I just roll this in my hand and wrap it around like this okay I'm gonna continue doing this off camera because it's really not that uh, interesting to watch and I'll get back to you when I'm done. Okay, so here I am at the end. And it doesn't always come out this perfectly, but actually my end and my beginning are pretty close to one another. I'm gonna knot this together like this, a few knots. And there we go. Um, gonna put a little bit of glue on there. So the knot is secured. And then I'm just gonna make sure that this is on the side. Okay. So now, I hope this works well on camera. I'm gonna take the eye pin and 
and slide it under the hole. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to take the eye pin and slide it under the whole bunch of uh, threads and then bend this up. In fact, this is too long. I'm going to make it a bit shorter. Bend it up like this. This I can cut, actually. This unruly straggler. There you go. So bend it up like this and then squish this together and wrap. Wrap the eye pin or the, the, the tail of the eye pin around like this. Leave it for now. Go to the other side. And do the same. It's easiest when I do it like this. Again, grab it all together and bend. And yeah, it was easier with the, the eye on the other side, but I'm not a good lefty. There you go. And wrap. This cannot go anywhere. So now we can take this off the cardboard or the, the lid in my case and continue working this way. Look how pretty it is. I really love how the colors come together. Okay. So now I'm going to make this a bit more uh, uh, neater. So I'm gonna grab this It's not really cooperating all that well. There you go. Okay, make sure that you keep um, quite an end here, like this, oops, something fell over, and then just bend this around. We're not gonna, we're not gonna use this one. We're just gonna use this one, make it stick up straight. And do the same on the other side. I still have a straggler here. Snip. Now this one was uh, done properly. I'm just going to bend this around as well. Like this. And straighten this up. There you go. This is... Um kind of crucial that you make sure that um, you do this without tangling up the whole strand of beads because that's just a, a real pita. Then you take the bead cap, put it on and like with the um, um, uh, Turkish crochet, I like this to be snug. So what I'm going to do is just keep on rolling like this, just to make sure that this is nice and tight and you get a little bit of a, a telephone wire thingy. Same thing on the other side. This one is shorter. I could have cut a little bit from the other one, but just roll and make sure it's nice and snug. There you go. And this is not going anywhere and it's covering everything up nicely like that. And then it's just a matter of attaching 
the clasp and the ring. So when we open a ring, always like this, never pull it open like that. On one side, we put the clasp. Like so. And I just notice my knot here. That's not pretty, so cut it off. And this you will never notice this is just gonna disappear in the in the thing. Okay, and now the other side. I like using a larger ring on the opposite side of the clasp just because it's just easier to to uh, find and to attach. Now if you want, you can add a little bit of length here. And I'll show you how I done it with the black one. See, I added some beads to make it a little airier, a little more length. And I could do that, but I wanted to show you the end result of both. It's really just a matter of taste. Oh yeah, I also wanted to show you this real quick as well. So the lid is about 40 centimeters. When you look at the, the large, like the side here, it's about 40 centimeters that I wrapped. And that's a good length for a necklace. 40 to 42 centimeters is a good length. Now, if I measure the necklace from bead cap to bead cap and I don't stretch it too much, see I only have 39 centimeters left. So always take into consideration that when you wrap it around your cardboard or lid or whatever you're using, um, you tend to stretch it a little bit and it's gonna shrink some when you um, when you take it off. So always keep in mind that you might have a, a few centimeters of difference. So, okay, that was it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I inspired you to make your own um, chain stitch uh, crochet necklace. And I know for sure that I'm going to make this one also. And um, you will see the end result of that in one of my vlog videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what I do, don't be shy to like, subscribe and share. And um, feel free to show me the pic uh, show me pictures of what you made you can always email it to the email address in the description box see you next time bye